mailbag time. Let's see what we've got in this one. I think there'll be links down below as well for things I can give you links for, so watch out for those. And also click like and subscribe if you like mailbag videos, if you're not already subscribed. Alright, these are some little needle probe things. I've got a few of them. I've already got one of these. So you've got a 2mm socket which will fit into a standard multimeter lead. So this is actually quite a long one but I think it will still go. Just will it go in there? Just yeah just this one just goes if you've got shorter probes it's probably better. Anyway that will go in there. Just goes on that one. And then that gives you these needle probes at the other end. So if you need to do some really fine probing, like a needle to get into something, or maybe even push this into a connector, that's what I tend to use this for, is push them into connectors. So you've got like JST plugs, things like that, you can push this into a pin, so if you're trying to power something through a plug, you can shove this through. I also use it doing battery charging as well, of course, you've got those sorts of plugs on batteries as well sometimes, and you can maybe charge two or three batteries in parallel at once, depending on the connector types. Useful for that too. Well, I saw these on AliExpress and I thought they look like they got some use. If I can get them out of the packet, I'll show you. This is ridiculous. Yeah, okay. Got this angle blade there, right? So if you're using a stencil to put like solder balls onto a BGA chip or something like that, you could use this a bit more easily to actually hold the stencil down flat because it's got like that flatness there so it gives you a chance to actually push each side of the chip normally if you've got straight tweezers you know you're trying to hold them down you know this be this part wouldn't it you're trying to get it down there to get it do it but this would be much easier to do that particular task I mean, it's also about a comfortable bench height as well if you're working on the bench I thought it'd be good for that potentially or maybe you know tweezering in awkward spots that could also be useful trying to try and get around a part or something you know which is in the way these were not that expensive and they seem okay Real life ST20. Seriously, a bag inside a bag. Let me guess another bag inside here. <laughs> there is! There's a bag inside a bag inside a bag. Oh, this is ridiculous. This is just a um a cheap probe set, a very cheap probe set. I've got one of these, or well, very similar to this already, might even be exactly the same. Basically it's got screwing tips things on it. You've got little banana type screwings, like 4 mil jacks, blades, stuff like that. So if you need to make up some kind of weird custom test cable, sort of some kind of configuration you're doing at the time, then you can do it with this. It's also got screwing probes as well, how useful they are, I don't know. Screw on cut hole clips. And basically you've got these screwing connections on each end of the wire so you can design it as you need it so I found it useful a couple of times I was thinking I've only got one of these sets so I've got another one I think it's a battery case but the packaging looks surprisingly good for that Right, okay, so it's a battery case for storing AAs, I think. But it appears to be a battery test tube on the side there as well. Yeah, that's actually not a bad little case. So it's got this spacing actually get in, hopefully, pick the things up. I don't know, my course is just turn it upside down, I suppose. But yeah, it's got those triple A's and AAs that test are there. Looks like they've probably just got some go no go LEDs. Yeah. Basically, I recently organised my battery drawer. I've got a drawer full of batteries, and I was organising it. I realised I've got some Panasonic batteries with nickel metal hydrides. The name has gone off the top of my head right now. You know the name. Put it in the comments down below. The black batteries. <laughs> and I, I realised I've got some packets of those in there, which I haven't charged for. But unopened packets. I've had them for there for a couple of years. So I've not thought, oh no. A couple of them were quite low, <laughs> so recharged them all and I sorted all these batteries out and I realised I don't actually have any holders to put all these batteries into once they're charged. Yeah, I guess this means those are done this way so you can put them in that way around. Hmm, maybe. So I've got a holder 
I don't think I need the packaging. And uh, in that same vein, um, I've got some more holders. 18650, AA, another AA, 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 triple A, maybe another AA, you want it? AA, and another triple A. Um, yeah, because I realised that I've got a lot of batteries which need to be kind of stored better than they are rather than chucked into a drawer floating around randomly touching each other probably not the best situation so uh, yeah I got this one because that looked quite nice and robust and I also saw these cheap ones here I thought actually that's probably right for the other batteries and as I gradually get through those batteries and they disappear I won't need these cases anymore I won't be too sad about throwing them out because they're not that expensive if I ever throw them out 8650s I need to store those better for a start but um, yeah I've got quite a few batteries I need to organise and some of these are just not standard AA batteries you know alkaline batteries don't need actually charging once so once they're used and gone they're done you know but I do have rechargeables as well which is what I was thinking of as I said organising before alright oh, the TPMS I showed one of these not long ago uh, a few weeks ago probably another mailbag I got one for my wife and put it in her car and surprised her with it she didn't to say anything about the fact that I surprised her with the TPMS actually I mean we talked about the fact she's using it and stuff like that but she hasn't actually said oh thanks for getting that or something like that I don't know yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just it occurred to me that she didn't actually really commented the fact that I surprised her with putting a TPMS in the car without saying anything anyway I've got another one reason being my own car doesn't have one <laughs> so we've got three cars we drive and one of them's got like an android stereo version which is you know plugged into the android stereo that's on screen display and that sort of stuff and that interfaces to that and that's been playable recently as well actually i might have to look at that so i got one of these from my wife's car because she had an issue with the head of flat tire and she almost got caught out by that and I realized actually my car doesn't have one on either and based on how hers was working i thought I'll get another one because these were not expensive these are like thirty dollars New Zealand some of that not expensive at all if it lasts a year yeah that's right thirty bucks still got the sensors all right so even if this pet fails you know because it's sitting in the sun I don't like that part do like the, the bike's got these fake vents on the bottom could you actually use some real vents um make sure I put it apart and have a look even if this bit dies I've got the sensors and maybe I'd like interface into another unit I don't know if it's a standard protocol they use or what I don't know there might be might be a standard off-the-shelf IC which does it or you can just plug them into something else might be possible there you go it's got a little bit of power in it yeah so yeah that's working so um, yeah turn it off so it's got an internal battery and it's got a solar cell on the top so that charges the internal battery or maybe it's a bloody capacitor I don't know yeah let's open up and have a look inside but I don't like the fact that these things get really hot because it sits in the sun and New Zealand sun's very really hot it's like Australia in, in some ways where the sun is very intense it's definitely kind of intense over here it's more of UV light you've got high levels of UV whereas the sun in Australia is just harsher in general but it doesn't compare to like the UK for example where you know even on a really hot sunny day that's nothing compared to what you get over here anyway let's open up and have a look see what's inside it because I haven't actually looked at it that's just spinning. That screw's been stripped. How about this one? That one's coming out. Where's my old tray? Come on, there you go. There's a screw to hold somewhere. There we go. I'd definitely like to get this one out if I can. Just spinning. Now let's just try and open it. Let's short the battery out. Let's just do that. What could possibly go wrong? Come on. There must be. There we go. There's the thing. I was right. It is there. Yeah. And get a better spudger in there. 
trying to be hard with that screw which is stripped. There we go, that's coming out there. Pulling that screw out. Okay. What we got? It's a little lithium cell in there. We'll try and do this without breaking anything. There we go. There we go, that's what's in it. Not a lot. There's the buttons, there's the circuit board, there's the display. The one thing that bugs me a little bit on my wife's one is that this bezel here is actually too narrow on the display. It takes USB C. I'll try and see if I can show you. Alright, so it's just an LCD display, but but the edge of the bar symbol, for example, that is like cut off a little bit. And over here is also slightly cut off. It's pillar to appeal. And like the battery symbol over there, it's also very slightly cut off. So it's actually not great for the bezel part. Sort of needs to be trimmed a little bit. So now if you look through there, you see that the battery symbol is cut off very slightly. The bar symbol is cut off very slightly. You've got the little sun symbol there, shows that the solar panel is receiving light. Um, but you can see it's actually being cut off very slightly there. So it's like the bezel is just a little bit too narrow. Just a little irritation. But yeah, tiny little cell in there. What is that? 400 milliamp hour battery. So that's what that's using. So I mean, it's room in there to actually upgrade that to a bigger one. And it looks like they actually had design here for a supercapacitor. But what I don't like is how hot this thing gets. It gets bloody hot. But yeah, you can easily upgrade that battery cell to a much bigger one. Let's have a close look at the actual board. So here's a buzzer. That does actually beep when you get a tyre which goes below the preset value. We've got some missing componentry which is quite interesting because it's already so simple. U3 is missing, whatever that is. There's no Y1 which would be a crystal. Um, so it's not using that, so it's using internal oscillator on that thing, probably like an RC oscillator or something. But it's surprising how many parts are actually missing off this board. Especially when you come over here and go, okay that's an antenna. Well kind of, that end of the antenna goes to the ground it looks like. Or is it using all of this as an antenna? I'm not quite sure. Maybe it is, using all of that as an antenna. But it sort of comes down to like, well where's the chip that runs on? There's no chip, no componentry around it. Do a digital zoom, see how we go with that. But yeah, it's like the antenna comes down and goes through here, goes to a capacitor, goes over there, and goes into this chip. So this chip is obviously instead of that one. And it's a, well it looks like a 490 RE, whatever that is. Dunno, got no idea what that is. And that chip there has got seemingly no markings on it, I can't think, nothing I can see, it looks like it's been etched off or this is never there before, I don't know. Can't see any markings on that chip there. But yeah. Got some charge controller stuff down this end. What's that? SA4354. That's obviously a charge control kit because it's going to the battery there. And that wire isn't looking the best, is it? Let's hang on by a thread. <laughs> Maybe not disturb it too much then. But yeah, not much to it. Surprisingly empty. There's a subscribe link over there to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and you like electronics videos or mailbag videos, that kind of things. I mean, I do lots of repair videos, maybe that's what you're interested in electronics repairs. Subscribe for that. You'll see those things coming up quite often. I do one every week. Other videos to watch down below there, other playlists, especially down in the description. Don't forget to look at the description for these items. You can also buy me a coffee. There's a Patreon support link over there if you choose to support me by Patreon and you also get extra perks like I'm doing repairs, you get manuals. If I've got a manual, I'll publish it with the video. Okay, catch you later.